Hello, this is my seventh time trying to make this video. My initial plan was to talk about Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother by Amy Chua. Um, I recorded it six times and it was terrible, so I'm just not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, some books that I haven't read, which is the complete opposite of what a book review is supposed to be about. But I'm just going to give you um, a list of the six, seven books that I want to read this year that I got last year for myself. Some were gifts, um, some um, um, some were gifts, some I bought for myself. Um, I'm I'm hoping that if you if you've read some of them, you can tell me which ones I should start with and which ones are the most interesting. And maybe we can, you know, talk about that or something. Um, the first book that I got for myself at school is Africa Counts. Um, I'm a, I study maths at university. I'm doing a BSc in maths. And I'm also interested in, you know, African politics, African history, and all that sort of thing. So I thought that this book would be a great fit for myself. It's actually about um, the number and pattern in African culture. So it's basically... Um, the history of maths in Africa. So I'm quite excited. I have not started to read this book. I was so excited when I got it. I will read it. I will read it. And then I will be a snob about how much I've read it. Um, the second book that I want to read was a gift from a friend of mine who traveled to Zimbabwe and I asked him to bring me some books. And he brought me Where To Now. Um, Where To Now. It's short stories from Zimbabwe. I love, love short stories. I don't know if you've seen my blog. Um, I started off by writing a few short stories there, many incomplete. Writing short stories is very hard, by the way. So yes, um, that's what I have on my blog. Um, and this is the book that I want to read. Okay. Um, the next is Chairman of Fools. Chairman of Fools by Shema Chinodia, the author of the award-winning novel Harvest of Thorns. Um, it examines the plight of a supposedly successful writer and professor of literature, Farai Chari, an ambitious artist whose self-confidence is under threat. Increasingly paranoid, he feels the pull of tradition and culture and the hollowness of middle-class aspirations in a cruel country. He yearns for a world in which men and women can freely associate with one another. Students respect their teachers, wives honor their wives, their husbands, and he can enjoy the freedom to gratify his passions without chastisement okay this seems very interesting i would i need to read this book i will read it i actually i should read it i should read it yeah i think that might be the first one um the next is um the granted book of african short stories i have read this book i just have not finished it i think i went up to page 210 um yeah i loved i love short stories by African authors. I love compilations because you you discover so many amazing writers. Um, there's actually a book that I hoped that I could talk about um, called the, the Bed Book of Short Stories. It's basically um, a compilation of short stories written by Africans to do with the word bed, I think. And I discovered so many amazing writers, but the most notable for me was um, Lori Kubutzile. She wrote this hilarious short story called um, I think in the spirit of McPhineas something. Wow, it was extremely funny. Can I just give you like a brief synopsis? Um, basically, it's, it's, it starts off at a funeral and it's, I think it's set in rural, some rural Tswana village in, I think, South Africa. Or maybe Botswana, I don't know. I hear she's actually in Botswana. Anyway, so, um, so, she, so it starts off at a funeral and you find that... Um, a bunch of women are crying, crying, like excessively crying over this, you know, um, casket or whatever that's being buried. And the men are just like waiting for the thing to be done. They just want it to be done. Guru, they are so tired or so happy for this person to be dead. They even start like shoveling <laughs> inside. And you, as the story unfolds, you find out that the man that's being buried it was um, the sexual god, you know was the sex machine for the village. You know, he pleased all the ladies. So it's very, very funny. I recommend you get that book. I will write down its title. It's very, very funny. So I like short stories because they introduce you to writers like that. Um, this book introduced me to someone that I was actually fangirling on Twitter this week. Um, God, his name is so difficult to say. Um, 
Binga Vanga Wainaina. Yes, I absolutely I loved his book because it was drenched in his, his short story in this book um was kind of drenched in this fascinating cynicism that I just he just sounded tired. He sounded tired of the story he was telling and I just thought that was fascinating to me. In any case, yes. I bought this book for myself as well, um, at exclusive books. I have not read it, uh, <laughs> but I should. It's um, You Must Set Forth at Dawn, um, Wole Seinka. Yes, I have to read this book. I recently read an interview of his in New African magazine. I just found him very interesting. I liked his perspective. I liked the way he spoke, and um, so I think I should read this book. I'm very excited to read it. This one is one that I have not read yet, but I do have it, and I should read it. Um, it's called the, the Racial Economy of Science by Sandra Harding. Basically, it's a compilation of um, essays discussing how science is sometimes, um, research is sometimes um, altered for some sort of uh, agenda. Um, you know, you find things like, oh, women, like, you know, for example, how all these old scientific laws that, oh, you know, for example, women have smaller brains, that was backed up by science, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the racial economy of science. That's what, that's the sort of thing that it's about. The last one, um, not least, that I should read this year is The History of Africa. I should read this book by Kevin Shellington. Um, this is the revised second edition. I should read this book, yes. So that is the list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I have to read. And I can read them because, I mean, I have devoured, I think, four books this week. I did not want to talk about the books that I was reading this week because they're very personal. And um, yes. So yes, so um, I should read this book. It's, it's very, can I just say something very odd? It's very weird for me to get used to. I've forgotten what it's like to read a physical book. I'm just so used to my little Kindle and everything is just, you know, so um, these books are not available on Kindle. But I will read them and I will talk about them. You tell me if you've read any of them and then we can discuss them. You can tell me which ones are worth the read, which ones are not, um, all of that, yeah. So thank you for watching and enjoy your weekend. See Ender Rides again. Yeah, so. <laughs> I have a Twitter, I have a blog, enjoy your Sunday. <laughs>